pleasant day to everybody. Now we're, we are uh, proceeding with our next chapter, which is the determinants of development. Again, this is Miss Jero. Can you please taking down notes? All the lessons or the discussions on this video so that you can have a light bulb moment notes while I am discussing. Okay, so these are the objectives. Number one is explain the concept of economic de development, which I already did last uh, be, uh, last video or the previous video. Next, uh, identify the rules of different sectors in development and present an overview of the foreign investment and aid and trade. Okay, so what is economic development? So obviously, economic development is the primary objective of the majority of the world's nations. Um, in here, uh, this is true. Why? Because um, this is accept accepted without controversy. So, it will appear in public discourse, at least, no, raising the well-being of social economic cap capabilities of peoples everywhere is easily the most crucial social task facing us today. So every year, aid is disbursed, investment are undertaken, policies are framed, and to elaborate the plans hatched to achieve this goal, or at least to get closer to it. How do we identify and track the result of those efforts or, or this effort? So we have some criteria for us to evaluate uh, the extent of the development per se. Okay. So, ano na nga po ba? Yung nag, ano po ba yung nagiging trabaho nung sectors natin when it comes to development? Ayan. Um, in, in development also, no, uh, ang pinatopic din natin doon or we are uh, dealing with uh, the how how economy or how the country's economy will prosper. So, nakikita or nalalaman natin na ang isang bansa ay nagpo-prosper. Siyempre po, nakadepende ito doon sa tinatawag natin na GNI or yung tinatawag na Gross National Income. So, ilan, gaano na po ba ka, kalayo or gaano na po ba kadami yung nagiging paggawa ng isang bansa. So, by by those things, malalaman natin na ay ang yaman nila because of this. Ay ang, lamay, ang yaman nila because of these things. So, meaning, uh, when we measure or when we determine if the countries ay nagkakaroon ng development, it is because by the numbers. Okay? That numbers is not just a numbers. Meaning, yung numbers na yon meron siyang pinagbasihan. Okay, meron 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 tring na baho, kumbaga. That's why uh, whatever the work or whatever the output of a certain nation, okay, it can definitely reflected to their GNI. Now, so what will be the roles of the different sectors in development? Um in here, no, we have the public and the private sector. So ano po ba itong dalawa na ito? So Public sa uh, puta mo na tayo ng ano ng private sector, no? Private sector, uh, this is a key. Okay, is a key stakeholder in both urban and economic development, being a major contributor to national income and the principal creator or the principal job creator and employer. The private sector provides around ninety percent or maybe up or more, or more than 90% of employment in the developing world, so including formal or even informal jobs. So, delivers critical goods and services and contributes to tax revenues and the efficient flow of capital. So, ano po ba yung private sector? Kung, uh, yung private sectors po, it deals with the businesses, private businesses, firms, na kung saan hindi kahawa or hindi po siya manageable by the, pop, by, by the government. Okay? So, ulitin natin. Pag sanabi yung private sector, ito po yung mga businesses. No? Which is, yung mga businesses nila to, ito yung tinatawag natin na blood of economy. ba Kapag puno mo lang tayo ng blood, automatically, what what will happen to us? Siyempre, mamamatay tayo. Meaning to say, 
we need to have businesses so that our economy can have a smooth flow. Okay? Yung economy natin magdire-diretso. Alright? So, what is the importance of having private sector or businesses in our nation? Okay. So, syempre, dahil meron tayong business or like, uh, like for example, merong, merong business sa community natin, they're going to create a uh, restaurant or sabi natin manufacturing or whatsoever. So, since dahil sila ay private sector, syempre, ang una nilang kailangan dyan tao. No? So, dahil kailangan nila ng tao, they can help. Not just about the individual who have job. Okay? But also, to... In, in in the community as well. No? So, kapag ka naging empleyado niya yun, di ba, kukunti na lang yung taong walang trabaho dun sa area niya. Okay, what else? Yung tao na yun, kapag ka, uh, kapag ka, nabibili niya na yung kanyang pangangailangan, di ba, hindi na siya magkukumit ng crime. Bakit? Kasi natutugunan na yung kanyang necessities. And then, if that person or if that employees can earn uh, can earn more or let's say nakakapag-save na siya and then dumating yung time na kung saan uh, nabibili niya na yung kanyang mga gust- kagustuhan so nababawasan yung property rate okay and then yung employee na yun no dahil sa inag work automatically we are every, every one of us are obliged to pay taxes so that can be also a revenue to the government and whatever the taxes that the uh, ta- taxes came from the businesses and also came from the labor, so yun po yung ginagamit ng government para po magkaroon tayo ng iba't ibang program sa bansa natin. Okay, next. We also have the foreign, ah, sorry, the public sector. Yung pag sinabi natin public sector, we are dealing with the government. Okay? So, public sector plays also a key role here in the Philippines about economic development. So, although most analysis will single out the importance of private sector, lead growth, and sound macroeconomics policy as the drivers of development, so as closer look into the Philippine economic situation, reveal a major issues and factors vital to the entertainment or attainment of economic development encompasses within the sphere of public administrations and government. So, si public sector, okay, ang role po niya is to maximize all the profit that they gain from the private sectors and also came from the laborers. Okay? So, ang gagawin ni public sectors, okay, mag-iisip siya ng iba't ibang prob- uh, program. Okay? Mag-iisip siya ng iba't ibang policy. Mag-iisip siya ng iba't ibang classing services so that it can help the people, it can help the society, it can help the environment. So, yan. So, meaning, itong dalawang sectors na to, uh, they, they really have a big role when it comes to economic development. Alright. So, another thing is what we have, the foreign investment. Okay? So, ano po ba yung foreign investment? So, literally, ito yung mga investors na originally came from the Philippines. Right? So, uh, foreign investment, it, co- it can also be an aid for us, for the economy to develop more. Not just, re- uh, not just dependent on the private or even the public sectors. So, yung foreign aid na tinatawag, uh, this, is, uh, this is the absence of adequate domestic resources for capital formation. And it uh, is also necessary to import foreign capital in the form of loans and grants from advanced countries without any strings. But the best source is to start joint venture, whereby foreign investors bring technical know-how along with capital and they train local laborers and enterprise. So capital can be... um, imported directly by paying for through export. So, this is the best policy because export pay for imports. So, but uh, if it is not possible for the backward economy to increase its export to the level of capital capital imports in the initial stage of 
development. So, yung foreign investment natin, it is divided into two. Meron tayong dalawang type na ito. Okay. So, these are the types of our foreign investors or foreign investment. So, pag sinabing direct investment, it means that the concern of investing countries exercise control over the assets created in the capital imports. Countries by means of that investment. So, um, direct investment, no, uh, it may take many forms. Marami siyang iba't ibang uh, pwedeng gawin. Okay? When it comes to direct investment, uh, the formation in the capital importing country of a subsidiary of a company of the investing country. That's number one. Number two, the formation of a concern in which company of the investing country has a major holding. Okay? Number three, the formation of the capital importing country of a, of a company financed exclusively by the present concern sit, uh, situated in the investing country. Next is the setting up a corporation in the investing country for the specific purpose of operating in the other concerns. Or it can be also the creation of fixed assets in the other country by the national of investing countries. So, yun. Pag sinabing, indir pag sinabing direct investment, uh, literally, uh, foreign investors will invest here in the Philippines. Or, kapag ka sila ay nag-invest dito, they, uh, lahat ng resources, most of the time, nanggagaling, okay, dito sa Philippines. So, in that sense, no, uh, dahil sila ay nag-invest, ano mangyayari? Magkakaroon na naman tayo ng, activity, ng, ng economic activity. May kikilos na naman. May magiging output na naman. May magiging pera na naman. So, so uh, this kind of uh, investment is definitely uh, one of the big help when it comes to our economic development. And the next type is we have the indirect investment. Okay? Uh, ito po ay kadalasang tinatawag na portfolio or what we call the renter investment. It is consists mainly of the holding of transferable securities issues or guaranteed guaranteed by the government of the capital importing country share or debentures by the nationals of some other country. So, dito naman, okay, pag sinabi naman natin indirect, those uh, investment are not just, are not literally go to the country and then put some businesses know. Yung indirect investment po, it's either they they buy a stocks or they buy a, a bonds, okay, a certain a certain share of a company. So, yun, yun lang siya. Kaya siya tinawag na indirect investment. Ibig sabihin, um, nag invest lang siya through, 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 uh, through stocks or through bonds. Meaning, hindi siya talaga literally like, well, like in indirect investment na lahat ng kanyang efforts in exert niya okay just to have a business here in the Philippines all right so yun lang yung indirect investment it's all about share okay so for more clarification about the foreign direct investment let's watch this video foreign direct investment Brazil is the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in Latin America. But do you know what foreign direct investment is? It is the long-term investment in a foreign country. Robert works in a multinational company that produces microchips for smartphones. The firm is based in Europe with factories in Asia and the United States from where their products are exported to Brazil. Robert is responsible for the opening of subsidiaries to expand the company's global presence. Apex Brazil detected that Robert's company has technologies that would help the development of the Brazilian productive chain in the electronics industry. Apex Brazil contacted him to present investment opportunities in Brazil and the incentives that are available to facilitate the company's production in the country. 
like the company where Robert works, several other foreign companies find in Brazil excellent opportunities for investment in sectors such as energy, infrastructure, automotive, medical equipment, semiconductors and biotechnology, among others. Companies also find a favorable business environment for investment with a growing consumer market, abundant natural resources, skilled workforce, a stable democracy and legal environment. Robert understands this potential and is currently evaluating the best way to invest in Brazil. Some options are considered for the country. The construction of a new industrial plant, the merger or acquisition of a company already operating in Brazil, or a partnership with the local company to offer their products and services in the Brazilian market. Robert decides to visit the country. Apex Brazil offers free support to build relationships with governments, organizations and companies in all regions of the country. Investors then gain a clearer view of the market, available infrastructure, potential partners, costs, taxations, labor availability, logistics and compliance to Brazilian norms and regulations. In addition, they have the chance to negotiate incentives and a strategic location for the plant. After Robert's trip to the country, the company decided to invest. Good for them and for Brazil. Foreign direct investment brings new technologies, improves the trade flow and the infrastructure, takes the country to global value chains, generates employment and taxes, and stimulates workforce qualification, helping Brazil to grow. Apex Brazil, promoting investments for Brazil's growth. All right, so in connection here in the Philippines, uh, once we talk about foreign direct investment, it's all about work. It's all about job. Okay? So, foreign direct investment, it's like trabaho para sa bawat Pilipino. Okay? Because they are uh, providing labor. They are providing manpower. So, uh, most of the time, yung mga foreign investors natin, sila po yung mga mayayaman na, na investors or mga businesses who are part of multinational companies. Okay? So, bakit po nakikinabang ang bansa natin or let's say why our countries can have uh, a development through this kind of investment? So, dahil nag-invest sila dito, so, ang magiging labor nila and even the raw materials na gagamitin nila sa kanilang business is magagaling din sa atin. Okay? Bakit po? Kasi siyempre, mas mahal kapag ka nag-import pa sila. Dahil nandito na sila eh. So, dito maghahanap na sila ng, ro ng tinatawag na supplier. Di ba? So, yung supplier na yon it can be also help to those businesses na magsusupply sa kanila. And because of the foreign investors also, yung mga businesses na kung saan maliliit lang. Or let's say, uh, yung mga businesses na hindi ganun ka... ka kalaki or let's say hindi ganoon kayayaman okay nagkakaroon sila ng pagkakataon or nagkakaroon sila ng ng opportunity to grow also okay so ano ano, ano yung mga ito it, it, it could be a retail store it could be restaurant it can be security agency or in or many 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 to mention okay so because of these things no kung titingnan niyo nagkakaroon po siya ng domino effects no just because of this investment Okay, just because of this investment, just because of this in investment, the economic activities in the Philippines will move, will become busy, no? Uh, it creates income, meaning it can it can also create more jobs. Okay, so bakit po ang Pilipinas ay super attracted yung mga foreign investors dito sa atin. So, number one, we have the huge market. Pag sinabi yung huge market, um, people or Filipino love, love, love to spend. Okay? We are spender. Okay? Bakit po? Kasi, once we have money in our hand, automatically, ang iniisip natin, ano ang bibili natin? Tama? Hindi yung, paano ko kaya ito maiipon? Or, how can I save this? Yan. So doon pa lang, doon pa lang sa idea na 'yon, no? Meron na tayong, meron na silang market, no? 
it's it's definitely a huge market not just because of the population but also the behavior or the culture that we have and next po is the youthful human resources tayo kasi uh, we are so anyway we are so uh fun of expressing or let's say uh, gusto natin na uh, magaling tayo gusto natin mahusay tayo sa gantong larangan we always make ourselves prove to everybody that we are doing well Okay, that we do our job well. Alright? And of course, our manpower is word class. No? Paano ko nasabi word class? Lahat po ng panig dito sa mundo, lagi pong merong Pilipino. Okay? In that simply sense, no? Filipinos are word class. Again, thank you so much for listening. Any questions are highly appreciated.